Welcome back to another Minecraft Conquest Reforged video. I am the Kinder Knight, and we are back here on the wonderful Yarrowin map created by Lord Decker. And I am excited about today's episode. In the last episode, we built up this castle right here, Castle Rooston, and we toured it, the interiors, and now we will begin to start building up the village town around it and getting it all nice and good. And as you guys no doubtedly have noticed that it's some changes that has happened since the last episode, I have went ahead and added a palisade that goes around the castle and also a palisade that goes around the town that will kind of add as some extra level of protection for this village that we're gonna be building right here. And as we come to the front of the main gate, we see we have these two big doors with these um, steel kind of hinges you know, it probably wouldn't protect against a, a big, large army, but it can definitely slow them down a little bit and give the villagers enough time to flee and find refuge in the castle. And over here, um, again, we have another gate, a smaller one, just another entry point that um, the villagers can use in their day-to-day -day life. So again, I mentioned I wanted to have maybe 10 to 20 homes. I... <laughs> Got ahead of myself and uh, made a lot more space in here. So we'll probably bump that number up to between 20 and 30 homes, including profession. So without further ado, I'm gonna zip it and I'm gonna go ahead and cue this time lapse and I hope you guys enjoy. there you have it a quick and simple time lapse of our town real quick guys i did quite a bit of work off camera just because it was a lot of terraforming that needed to be done amongst other things and it would have made for a much longer video and i generally want to try and keep um video length down also there were some tweaks i needed to make so i just went ahead and took care of those as well also, as you probably noticed that all the houses thus far kind of generally look the same. I do want to start adding in um, more variety, but I also do want to still try and keep this kind of simple cookie cutter uh, kind of layout uh, style that I have going and also still try to give each individual house some character. Also, another thing to note is that this section is still very much unfinished. I will continue adding in more details and finishing touches that you will see by the next video in this series. Okay guys, before I give you guys a tour and show you guys what I've done in here so far, I wanna go ahead and give you guys a little bit of history, a little bit of lore on how this settlement came to be. 
So, two and a half centuries ago, when the first wave of foreign invaders came to the continent under the banner of King Larousse, seeking to claim more wealth and fertile lands to bring under his rule. Nearly defeated and driven out of the lands, it was right here where in the mid 10th century, King Larousse made his last stand where he would leave this battlefield in victory or in death. Outnumbered by one to three, Larousse's longtime loyal friend and general devised a tide turning plan which ended in their victory, solidifying his claim to the land. To protect his newly claimed territories, Larousse then had a Mott and Bailey built here with the keep on top of a natural hill, which he dubbed Final Stand, because this was the place where a king made his final stand and would reside and go on to fight and win many more battles. After a few years of protecting his claim and pacifying the natives, King Larousse felt confident that he could once again return home, having conquered this foreign lands. To continue protecting his newly claimed territory, he appointed his trusted general as his vassal, where he would be lord and charged with the continuation of protecting his king's holdings. At last, near the end of the 10th century, when King Larousse died around 980, as tribute to the king, the Lord of Final Stand officially changed its name to Roostenshire because it was home to his king and has become home to many more. So there you guys go. There's a little bit of... Um, lore backstory to this settlement it's still a work in progress but i really like what i was able to come up with i think it makes sense and i think it's going to work uh pretty good uh with our lore of this world now let's get back on with the tour i want to show you guys this place from the ground level so you guys can see what i've managed to do with the place this far Let's go ahead and check out this first house on the tour. Um, we won't be checking them all out because they'll all be generally decorated the same, but I want to give you guys an idea of what to expect. So let's go ahead and go on in. And as you see, we have a fireplace, which doubles as a cooking station or kitchen. And as you see, we have uh, stews and soups cooking. We have some hanging utensils. So again, it doubles as a place to keep uh, this place warm, as well as a place to cook. And if we make our way over here to this table, we see that our peasants have a couple of bowls of stew and some bread. And it makes sense because this would be the staple of their diet, would be pretty much breads and soups and stews, and maybe an occasional uh, rabbit or fish. Also, that's where the term or phrase give us our daily bread would have came from. Also, you guys notice how uh, I have things hanging from the ceiling. It's kind of my go-to technique. It's very historically accurate. Um, they would have hung things like this from the ceiling, like food and um, other perishables. That way things like rodents and mice couldn't get to it. So yeah, and if we go past this divider right here, um, we see we have two hayloft beds and this is also very accurate because this would pretty much be all they would have um, to sleep on and over here we have a little place for some storage and we have our ale are sitting here too so yeah it's pretty simple it's all they have you know they're peasants they wouldn't have much generally just a place to sleep eat and store some of their um, belongings so there you have it a look at the interiors of one of our peasants houses um, so let's go ahead and exit and move on with the tour. Now, I really try to really make this place look lived in and really inhabit it. So you guys will notice lots of clutter, lots of uh, cut wood, chopped logs laying about um, as we tour, as we move our way through this town or this section of the town. Over here, we have some hay that someone's uh, unloading or transporting for whatever reasons. And right here we have our uh, guard tower, our lookout tower, where our guards will always be posted, you know, looking out, um, surveying the horizon, making sure there is no one trying to uh, come in here and that would do any of these people any harm. So we're going to go ahead and move 
this way and we're gonna come to our first little farm I plan to add many many farms inside this place because I really want this place to convey that it is definitely self-sustainable and as we go in here we see we have some cabbages and some corn and then we have our friend the scarecrow right here <laughs> it's my little design um it's real simple but um it works i think it definitely works and then we have a coral over there so that's our first little farm area and now as we make our way over here we've come to a dove coat and basically what this is this is a way for housing and trapping doves and pigeons and we know that they were an important food source for the medieval people. So I plan to add a few of these scattered about the settlement. And so now we're gonna go ahead and move past that and we're gonna come into the another uh, farm area where we have some bean stalks growing, we got more corn and we have wheat, which is very important for making bread. And we're gonna go up here where we have more wheat and some cabbage and also some uh, barley that's that'll be growing. So there you have it. Again, I'm gonna be adding a few more farms like this because again, I want this place to really feel alive and feel like it can self-sustain itself. So we're gonna go ahead and make our way down here. Again, as you notice, we have logs out because that's a very important resource for making uh, food and keeping the heat in your homes so we come into this kind of this little area it's unfinished obviously but I think it's off to a good start really working hard to really give everything a really um, realistic kind of lived-in feel so I'm really gonna work um, at really trying to bring some life into this area and as we go back here, we have what could be like a barn or maybe it's a, a pen or, you know, something where we will keep some animals or just storing some more things. And as you see, we have a little cart over here with some more hay about, you know, giving it a busy feeling. And, you know, there's always work to be done in this place. That's how a medieval village would have looked. You know, like everywhere you look, there'll be something that needs to be shoveled or scooped or chopped or moved to another location. So yeah. if we make our way over here, we see so we have a little table right here for maybe playing some cards when uh, the workers get a, a break or a chance to settle down. So that I think that's pretty much it uh, to show you guys for right now. I thank you guys for um, sticking around if you guys made it this far in the video. So there you guys have it, a little tour of our budding settlement, Roostenshire. I really appreciate it if you guys stuck around through the whole video. I know it wasn't that exciting, but also as a thank you for all the support and love you all have been showing the channel, I want to finally announce the winners of the Steam $30 gift card giveaway. And the winners names were completely picked at random from those of you who uh, subscribed, liked, and commented on the video. And the first name, please forgive me if I uh, mispronounced this, but Biophysics. And the second name is Parker Johnson. And if I butchered the pronunciation of your name, don't fret, because I will have the your names uh, put in the video so you can see it. So guys, get in touch with me. What I will do is I'll start a thread down in the comment section and you can go down there and confirm. Then I will probably, you know, ask you for your email or something and we'll take it from there. And so as always, if you enjoy this type of content and would like to see more, please consider subscribing, join the Knight Army, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to turn on your red notification bell so you don't miss any future Minecraft Conquest Reforged videos. Drop a comment down below. Let me know how you feel about this series. As always, this has been The Kinder Knight, and I bid you a farewell.